Good morning. First, I'd like to welcome you all to Hong Kong. I suspect that uh, many of you is no stranger to Hong Kong. You've probably been through Hong Kong many times. But perhaps also allow me uh, for maybe a five minutes uh, for some history of Hong Kong, in case you are not aware of how we get to where we are today. Uh, reason for that is, uh, well, it's not, not even a surprise to you, even surprise to me. Uh, many of us in Hong Kong, actually, up until 1997, as you might know that 1997 is a key year. That's the year that Hong Kong returned to China. And before to 1997, what happened to Hong Kong? Well, there's only one aim for most Hong Kong people, is to make money. Well, there's nothing wrong with making money. But why? Why, why there is this rush to make money? Because the future is uncertain. Most of us, including myself, have no idea what will happen to Hong Kong after the return to China. Of course, running up to 97, I think people are you know, feeling a lot more comfortable. But for the most part of the 80s and to the early part of the 90s, you know, most people are just frightened that you know, the uncertainty. So we all try to make the most money that we can. Hopefully, we are rich enough that we can migrate ourselves to perhaps to your countries uh, to get a foreign passport, to buy the insurance, and, and come back to work, continue to work in Hong Kong, but with a, form, with a foreign uh, residency somewhere else. So that's, I think, can speak for most uh, people in the business in Hong Kong. So why I tell you all this? Well, interestingly enough, uh, past 1997, so what happened to Hong Kong after 1997? In fact, the very first day after Hong Kong returned to China in 1997, we got hit with Asia financial crisis. First started off with Thailand, and then rose out to the rest of Asia, including Hong Kong. So we went through a period of five years of uh, a pretty tough time. And then after that, we always also hit with some um, uh, health issues. Uh, we had birth flu uh, crisis in Hong Kong. Then we also have the infamous uh, SARS that pretty much put the city to a stop. So again, what was in the minds of most people? Economy. So all focus has been put on economy, and nothing wrong with that. But it's interesting, soon after the SARS crisis in 2003, obviously, uh, with the thanks to our motherland, China, uh, who since 2003 has shown huge support to Hong Kong, with a number of initiatives to help Hong Kong to uh, you know, pass through this very difficult time. And then from then on, interestingly, in Hong Kong, there's a new growing um, aspiration, especially from the younger part of our community. And that is uh, the whole, because also it's increasingly a buzzword, sustainability. So in this city, no longer are we just only focus on economic uh, activities, but we also like to look at issues like, as uh, the, uh, our moderator have uh, alluded earlier, issues such as heritage conservations to the environment, to the livelihood of the people. So no longer we are only being just looking at one side of the picture. I think people usually sum up Hong Kong as just, well, this is a business city. Well, it's now more than just a business city. Uh, as some of you who are familiar with Hong Kong, uh, the chief executive of Hong Kong in his policy address three years ago, he devoted almost one-third of his address, his policy address, focusing on heritage conservation. It is, in fact, something that I have never heard of in Hong Kong. In fact, the last five years, uh, the number of uh, projects that we have embarked on in preserving our past probably have, uh, have outdone what we have done in the last 40 years. Why? Well, perhaps, uh, as I mentioned to you, up to 1997, I think most people in Hong Kong really don't care about our past when we don't even know what our future is. Well, now our future is quite certain. I think, as our TDC chairman, uh, Jack Sir, alluded earlier, uh, we are for sure know what our role is now going forward. And of course, with the support from the mainland, I think most people in Hong Kong now clearly know this is our home. And this is not going to, they are not going to go away this time. Well, especially now with the, the world economy, it's quite clear that you know, most of us here to stay. 
So much effort by the government has now been put on to issues as you know, improving the environment, improving the livelihood of people, uh, town planning, city planning, everything. Uh, it is in fact uh, one of the, I think personally, is the key edge of Hong Kong over some of our mainland counterparts. Because many of the, uh, I'm, I'm also in the business, so I deal with many of uh, foreign, my foreign counterparts. Uh, they may be, uh, their, their business may be you know, in all parts of China, but most of the time they would prefer to put their family in Hong Kong because Hong Kong is perhaps the one place in China that is perhaps the most um, uh, safe, I suppose in safe not in terms, of, in terms of crime, but in terms of all four. I mean, you can put your kids in Hong Kong to school in the, probably the safest environment, probably in you know, an environment that probably the closest to your home, uh, to, to the homes of uh, many of our expatriates coming to work in Hong Kong. So it is a place that people are more familiar with. And so they're very concerned about not only you know, what the school system we have in Hong Kong, to the clean air. Now, now I know people have heard some horror story about Hong Kong, uh, the air quality. Uh, but again, if some of you have traveled to the rest of China, then I think you know what I mean, it's all relative. Uh, I mean, I hope I'm not offending anyone from our, uh, from our counterpart cities in China, but uh, from my own experience, I go to China quite often, but I can say that uh, we have the best air quality in, Hong in China. Uh, but this is obviously not, uh, you know, have any uh, sign of complacency. Uh, there's a lot more work need to be done. I mean, I, I, my wife's from Singapore, and we always argue you know, which is a better city. Um, I, I, I can tell you that at home, I always win the argument. Uh, but of course, I, 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 I agree. Uh, Singapore, in many aspects, is better than Hong Kong. Uh, but so, you know, that's really good for us. We always continue to uh, keep up and try to improve ourselves. So the government has actually put in a lot of effort to clean up you know, the, the environment, the, the air quality. So I am sure that uh, we will continue, this will continue to be a winning edge over many of our similar counterparts in the region. So apart from the air quality, it's also the, the quality of life. Quality, quality of life issue is also a very important one for many of our, uh, not just the local, especially also our expatriates. Uh, again, uh, Hong Kong is not a cheap place to live. So that's, we just have to live with. Uh, uh, but again, the question is, uh, what do we offer them in return? I mentioned earlier, uh, this is probably one of the safest places you can imagine. We have a very good uh, uh, civil, the, a very good civil society. You know, there's uh, obviously the, the freedom of speech, the free press, and all these things you always hear about Hong Kong, and it's true. And the funny thing is, um, most people in Hong Kong, we don't get to appreciate this. We take it for granted. This is, you know, because we, we live here and we always take this thing for granted. Only until you left Hong Kong. And then after, no matter it's one day or two days, and our way back to Hong Kong, the minute you pass through our immigration, then you say, wow, my goodness, thank God I'm back to Hong Kong. Because this things here actually work. So the, the, the civil servants here, the whole structure here is very important because it's a backbone for Hong Kong. We don't have any natural resources here. Unlike many of our counterparts, hey, all we had in Hong Kong is people. But the people here, I'm sure many of you who have worked with your counterparts in Hong Kong, you will agree with me that, uh, you know, it is the people, the flexibility, and uh, truly all very motivated. So this is, again, another winning edge of Hong Kong. Uh, many of us have worked, uh, myself included, uh, we have... Um, in fact, it's only been the last 10, 15 years that uh, we have been working with our partners in China, even ourselves. I mean, think about it. Uh, uh, we are no different from you. China is also a very foreign place to us. But because we have that 10, 15 years head ahead of you, you know, we have spent last 10, at least 10, 15 years working with our counterparts in China, so we know their culture. We, know, we understand how the system works. At the same time, we understand your system and your culture. So we are in a perfect place that we understand the needs of yours, uh, of course, not, not to mention the compliance issue. I mean, we are, we are accustomed to uh, the compliance requirement, the transparency requirements in 
from you know, the world standard, while at the same time we understand the different uh, local uh, uh, constraints in China. And so we, I believe personally that we, you know, we have the best of two worlds. I'm, not, I'm here not just to promote Hong Kong. I'm here telling you that from the fact that I'm in business and, and why I'm still here. Of course, I understand um, some of our businesses will need to be relocated to China for a simple fact that you have to be closer to your clients. So that's given. I mean, but, I think, but I still think that for most of you, for perhaps your headquarters, regional quarters, uh, you still want to put it in Hong Kong simply for the fact that uh, we have a, a good structure to protect the interests of your investments. At the same time, also more importantly, is the people again. Where do you want to put your family? Where do you want to put the, you know, your best talent? Where, where are they going to be located? In Hong Kong, and for the last five, six years, we have put, the government has put in a lot of effort to make sure that we're not just only focused on the business aspect, but we also put in a lot of our resources into uh, the quality of life. Uh, one last point I want to mention, healthcare. I mean, again, healthcare. We have an excellent healthcare system in Hong Kong, uh, one that I think is uh, perhaps one of the best in the region. Of course, lately, um, we, we are now come, we are seeing some new uh, crisis for among, among even for local people because our system is so good and uh, we have now many of our mainlanders, our, our friends from the mainland China is also coming to Hong Kong to use our facilities. So, uh, so there is now uh, a constraint increasingly uh, in also our healthcare delivery, but this is also, also an issue that Hong Kong government is trying to address. Uh, there will be more uh, land allocated to, for new providers in Hong Kong. So, and school as well. Another issue that I think many of you will be in, of concern is uh, international schools. Would there be international school provided for uh, many of your family? And again, uh, due to the increasing demand in this area, uh, there is a sort of a shortage. It's not exactly a shortage, it's just a mismatch. Uh, there are still uh, capacity, but perhaps not on Hong Kong Island, which is of big demand. So again, the government is putting uh, in putting in resources in that area to expand those supply. So we as a city, we understand the needs for Hong Kong is not only on business, which is also very important, uh, but apart from business, we need to build an environment, a very safe environment, a place with good quality of life provided for our local people as well as for our international expatriates uh, investment community. So with that, I'd just like to, uh, you know, just uh, in short, uh, hopefully in, in that five, ten minutes, uh, convinced that this is the right place for you to come, uh, the place not just to come in to invest, but come place to live. Thank you.